All right, so this is going to be our PowerPoint presentation for the Yasa Flow team. We'll be covering Monsters, Inc. So a little uh, table of contents here. We're going to do the introduction, pictures of all of us, and you know what we like to do, I guess. Characters of Monsters, Inc., general concepts, management concepts, conclusions of management, reflections, recommendations for future students, and references. So here's our little crew right here, DOS, the flow team. We got me, Trevor, we got Tom, we got Charles, we got Angie, and we got Oscar. All right, here's the uh, characters for Monsters, Inc. We have Boo, Mike, Sully, Water News, Fogs, and Fungus. Uh, for this setting of Monsters, Inc., the reason we chose Monsters, Inc. for our presentation is because we sought a way to educate youth and adults alike and the importance of business management and management concepts. Many audiences are familiar with this family fun movie, therefore translating the importance of business ethics, workforce systems, and managing with a diverse and open mindset in a distinct but recognizable approach. This project discusses the cause and effects of actions on a business and offers solutions and ideas while explaining the applicable management concepts found during this course. Our main focus is on ethics, business decisions, and management strategy, and applying those to seven episodes to create a practical tool for teaching management concepts to people of all ages. Energy is getting harder to produce at Monsters, Inc., which has put a lot of pressure on top management and poor employees alike. Monsters, Inc. presents a situation where employees face a series of ethical dilemma that not only affect one another, but can also gravely affect their whole city. These ethical dilemmas are primarily caused by a severe lack of ethical decision making from top management, paired with an inability to make productive change. And the setting is in Monstropolis, the main city of the movie. Alright, so the plots. Spooky city of Monstropolis is powered by electricity, which is generated from the screams of children. Yeah, they like the spook people to generate power from the real world. Pretty interesting. Alright, we'll be going over some management concepts now. For, we picked uh, two episodes that we really like to do a little, uh, like, finesse in. And here's the first one for episode one. Since the episode of Monsters, Inc. Dynamics portrays character relationships and the overall management situation for Monsters, Inc., it was rather easy to tie the scene with many of the concepts from our textbook. For starters, the audience can immediately see that Sully and Randall are the company's two best employees, despite their differences in attitude and approach. While Sully is personable and looked up to by his peers, Randall seems to be very competitive and caustic towards other characters, especially his assistant. Many could infer that these two would be the center of some sort of workplace conflict later in the series. Beyond that, Sully and Randall, the audience is introduced to Water News, an experienced CEO who has found himself in a recent production crisis with the company. He seems very committed to the old way of doing things, despite the fact that children who do not respond to scaring the same as in the past. His inability to make organizational change becomes readily apparent, and his potential to make hazardous decisions are foreshadowed in his dialogue with Sully. Alright, for our next uh, episode right here, we're going to highlight, uh, highlight our uh, episode 7, Winds of Change. While much of the Monsters, Inc. series is centered on a complex and ethical dilemma which involves each of the characters, this episode settles this dilemma and produces positive organizational change, unknown to the audience in the beginning of the series. Water News has been secretly plotting with Randall to kidnap children in order to make up for their company's inability to produce scare-based electricity. While there were many routes Water News could have taken in order to produce electricity, he chose to act unethically rather than use his conceptual skills as manager. In episode 7, Water News is arrested by the authorities for his actions, and Sully is put back in charge of Monsters, Inc. as the new CEO. Sully brings innovation to Monsters, Inc. by making children laugh in order to produce electricity. 
as it turns out, lap-based electricity is much more efficient and easier to produce than scare-based electricity. While this not only helps the company save money, it also increases the efficiency of job training and overall quality of workplace morale. With Sully at the helm, Monsters Inc. effectively redefines skills, leadership, planning, and decision-making processes. Here's our reflections, conclusions, and recommendations. So here's all reflections from everybody and tips they have for future people who might want to take management. All right, for Tom's recommendations, he recommends that you place emphasis on foundations and management. Managing change requires planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. A building without a stable base will collapse. Pay attention to these steps. Without them, life will be a constant game of catch-up. Clutter creates chaos, causes stress, and blinds you from opportunities right in front of you, all while you waste your time. I'm finally coming around, and the changes are incredible. At the beginning of the semester, read over the, read over the syllabus, grasp the instructor's expectations, and understand the schedule. Write down all assignments in a planner so you do not fall behind. Each week, be sure to read the textbook and watch the videos. Get the most out of this course. In the group project, communication is key. Get to know your group members. Be able to understand each member's strengths and weaknesses. Strategically, you can accomplish goals easier. Make sure you get a head start on each assignment and do not underestimate the workload. When you schedule ahead, the work is a lot easier. It is also important to meet in person so everyone can get aligned. Some tools we use to communicate and create were GroupMe, Skype, Google Docs, Google Slides, and Sony Vegas. Without utilizing these tools, it would be near impossible to work as a team. All right, here's Oscar's uh, recommendations. In this class, there is a lot to learn, and you have to move fast pace. Everything seems easy, and you can handle it at first, but you really have to go above and beyond work ahead and speak with the team you are given, because time will go on, will go quick, and the work will be more on you later. Work must be done as a team. Try to schedule dates and times for your group to meet in order to have all the assignments done in advance. Make sure you communicate with your team on a daily basis by writing logs and milestones. Make sure you read the book and understand the chapter before you write it, because it will be easier and words will fly since you will understand the concepts. Make it fun when doing the design challenges. Don't do them for a grade. The grade will be on how much effort you put in. Here's my recommendations for this. All right, so my recommendations for future students would be Take this class would be, for success, would be, if the group does not communicate well enough, then all aspects of the project will become confused. With no common goal, you will resort to doing your part individually. And when everyone submits their ideas, it will look unorganized and sloppy. We kind of had that problem early on where people, like, we would just assign people stuff and we never really talked about the vision of what we wanted to do exactly. So everybody did their own work and their own ideas and nobody could agree on anything. We eventually started ironing that, ironing that out with just clear communication on what we need to see and what needs to be done with it. Another tip would be to get creative. Professors like it when students put in extra effort in their projects and you will be rewarded with good grades if you apply yourself. All right, here's Angie's recommendations. Her recommendations would be to buy a calendar book and title it whatever comes to mind and just write out your schedule. Just visit the syllabus and view the additional pages posted and write it down. Once you get an understanding of the expectations, get to know your group. Last, read the textbook. These are the only real things to get a hold on your assignments and understand the course. I've always done many assignments each day to help spread the amount of work around since I work often. And I just cross it off in a calendar book. Then, by familiarizing yourself with the group dynamic, like finding a means to all communicate at once on certain days, is really about good relationship skills and learning to compromise situations. It is also about relating the knowledge in the textbook and from Dacio's lessons back to real world situations. Finally, for those skeptics of the creativity demanded in this class, you'll hopefully learn that it allows you to practice and open the strategic mindset working with differences with new perceptions. Charles's uh, perspective. 
While I have had, had online classes in the past, which require online and physical collaboration, this class took me well outside my comfort zone. Given that this project runs the entire course of the semester and requires constant collaboration with the same group, there are multiple challenges and hurdles overcome in order to produce effective work in a timely manner. One of these challenges is the fact that I attend USF to Tampa and do not have reliable means of transportation. This required me to take more active role in digital communications, an aspect which I began to work on with time. While I was able to meet with my group physically towards the end, I certainly believe I could have made a better attempt to engage my group mates in order to better produce better work for the project. My advice for future students taking this course, plan early, work often, and do not let civil obstacles be your undoing. Here's our conclusions for management. Tom, management is essential to, to sustainable, healthy life. This course helped me ma manage change in my life and business. Progressively, I'm working smarter, not harder. Through planning and directing my course, management results in lots of time. Nothing is more valuable than time. This course has taught our group concepts like working ethically and with morality in the workplace and the skills managers need skills managers need to be influential role models. These skills such as conceptual, interpersonal, can form business, encourage a culture where the business profits. Oscars, this class has taught me more about what it means to manage a business. One of the key skills you need to learn to manage is time. That would be very important in any business across the globe. Also, this has taught me also this has taught me more about leadership motivation skills as well as decision making, which that skill is still a struggle for me. Charles, this class has taught me skills specific to a management position. This includes main concepts of planning, coordinating, organizing, and controlling. This class has given me tools for managing diverse human resources, something I never previously encountered at USF. For me, this class has helped tremendously in my ability to coordinate with others. This is the most group-oriented course work I've ever done. Overall, I'm happy with the outcomes. Here's a list of our recommendations for future students and our references. Okay. Well.